So animations provide a delightful user experience and they're simple to add using Svelte. So we're going to add a simple slide and fade transition to the to-do list item depending on if the user adds or removes a to-do. And it's going to take two lines of code basically. So we can go to to-do Svelte and at the top we can import the transitions. So we can import fade and slide from the Svelte transition package. And then we just need to go to the LI and then we can define an enter animation. It's going to be slide and an exit animation when the component gets destroyed is going to be fade. We can save this and it should work. So if we go here, let's add a couple of items and you can see the animation and it looks awesome. So let's also look at the deleting. So it just elegantly fades out. So that's awesome. But there's one problem. So the transition is happening for each to do item when we change the filter. So for example, if I add them back and now when I'm going to filter them, you're going to see the animation is going to show, which isn't ideal. So we have to figure out a way how to fix it. So I want to emphasize that building something is the only time when you encounter a problem that requires a specific solution. So you're going to learn and understand how something works instead of just watching or reading about it. For example, me just telling you the solution to this problem is stealing away from you the learning opportunity. And that's why building and gaining experience on your own is very important. Because for example, if you were building on this own, you would run into this problem and you would go on a Discord or somewhere and be polite about it and very descriptive. And you would say, hey, I'm trying to do X, can you help me out? And someone can be like, yeah, sure, have you tried this and that? And then you can be like, ah, now is the time for me to understand about this part and learn it, right? So in this example, I came up with a solution so we can use a computed duration value that's going to be zero milliseconds or 250 milliseconds based on if filtering is true. So we're basically turning that transition on and off. And we're going to pass the duration to, to do Svelte. So it's going to look something like this. Set the filtering to true and then we set it to false. But there's one problem with this solution you're going to encounter. Since Svelte batches pending DOM changes for efficiency, nothing would happen. And we can see that is true if we log the duration value after we add it. So this is a great example of learning about the Svelte lifecycle function tick. Using tick, we can let Svelte know to update the DOM immediately. So if you don't know, you can go to the Svelte tutorial, which is excellent. And here is going to show you multiple examples of what tick is. So the tick function is unlike other lifecycle functions, and you can call it at any time, etc. And it resolves any pending DOM changes immediately. Because when you update components at Svelte, it doesn't update the DOM immediately. Instead, it waits until the next micro task. What is a microtask? I know as much as you do, honestly, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to solve a problem. So I can close this and then we can go back and then we can update the to-do Svelte and pass the duration prop. At the top, we can just, let me just move this type here. So at the top, let them be together. So at the top, let's import, import tick from Svelte. And then we can add more state. We can set let filtering by default, it's false. Yeah, so we can add a computer value, that's the duration. So we can say, if filtering, the transition shouldn't be anything, otherwise give it 250 milliseconds. And let us also debug this so we can console log the duration. Yeah, and we also have to write proper code right <laughs> so that's really hard okay so let's go to the set filter and this is the only place that we have to change yeah so set filter so let's first do it without using tick right so we can set filtering to true and then we can say filtering false like in the example so yes yeah, so let's save it and i think that's it we just need to pass it to the to do so let's go here, add to do, just pass the duration and we just need to catch it in our component. So I to do Svelte, I'm going to add a type, duration type is going to be a number. And then let's add the prop, export let duration, duration type. And for the duration, 
you can just pass it that property, right? Because we can specify transition properties. Just say duration, duration. So that's it. But now, before we celebrate, let's just go here. Refresh for good measure. So let's see what happens when we're not using tick. So we can see like nothing is logging out. And that's the problem. Because if we go here, just scoot the code over here. Yeah, because it's just going to say filtering true, then it's going to do its thing. Then it's going to basically queue this up and nothing is going to happen. So to prevent this, we just need to go back to this example. We need to make this function async. And since it's async, it now returns a promise, but we're still not returning anything. So we can say promise, which is also a generic. And we can say void. And then we can await. We can say, go here, we can say await. So we're saying filtering true, all right, so I'll update the DOM immediately. And then we're going to change the selected filter and we're going to say, all right, so I'll update the DOM immediately. And then let's save it. And let's try if it works. And it's instantaneously. And you can see here are the values that are being logged out. So great job and I hope you learned something.